You guys are good? Excellent. <laughs> good morning. I know you guys are all really tired. And um, I just have to share this with you guys. I went to a conference um, end of November. It's called the Advancing Healthy Partnerships Conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Krista was there. Tim was there. Andrew was there. It was great. But not enough of you guys were there. So I decided to take one of the presentations that I saw, come back and present it to you guys. So let's get going. Uh, okay. First of all, I have to give credit to these two amazing people, Harrison Korver and Mary Byers. They are the authors of these books. They did a presentation um, at the conference. And so all of these ideas, all of these thoughts in here, they are their ideas. Okay, so I, I can't claim ownership over them. I just want to make that very clear before we go forward. So let me set the stage here. What do you do when you're six months into your residency, your residency director sits you down and says, what do you think of our program? Okay, me? That's, that's what I would look like. Okay, I'm just saying. Um, so, let's not, sorry, let's not do that. So our friend Jack Sparrow instead. Um, the problem is not the problem, the problem is your attitude about the problem. So if you're afraid, you're scared to talk about change, don't be afraid. The whole point of this talk is to give you um, an essential framework for discussing change in opportunity, in organizations, in programs, in curriculum. This is a framework for you to guide, for everyone to professionally and cohesively discuss change and opportunity. <coughs> so first of all, you want to talk about strengths. This is the first thing we talked about in the SWOT analysis, right? Everybody remember that? Why? Somebody answer me why. Is it important to identify your strengths so you can, uh, so you can work through them? Exactly. Exactly, exactly. I'm really glad you said that. You can't work effectively from a position of weakness. <coughs> you work effectively from a position of strength. And everybody wants to talk about what they're good at, right? You walk up to somebody, they're always going to want to tell you something good, something positive what they're strong at. This is true of organizations across the board. So hit the strengths, highlight them, highlight what you're really good at, but most importantly, be honest. Your strengths might not be what you want them to be, but you have to be honest about them if you want to promote change and do it in an effective manner. I have Starbucks up here because um, I actually went to Tokyo at one point and I ordered a green tea latte. The amazing thing is that it was the same green tea latte you could get anywhere here in the States. So Starbucks has amazing consistency and standardization. Those are some of their strengths. So I thought I'd just highlight that. Number two is resources. <laughs> okay, you guys got the reference. Excellent. Resources. They're always limited. There is no organization on this planet that has infinite resources, okay? Everybody is limited by time, money, manpower, and space, always. So know what your resources are. Know that there are going to be limitations and make concentration decisions. This is the essence of strategy as I see it today. What are some of COCP's resources? Heart. Heart, I love it. Excellent, like willpower, everybody working together. Somebody else? Students. Time, yes. Students, this is great, I love it. So I originally intended to do this talk before we did our SWOT analysis to get everybody pumped up. Didn't work out that way, that's okay. But when you're talking to your residency director, be sure to say to them, this is what I see we are capable of based on our current resources. Some of them you're gonna to continue to use, some of them you won't, and I'll get to that. Number three is fit. And it took me a really long time to understand this concept. I had to go back to my notes and read them about 16 times before I really got the essence of it. And I'm gonna do this by um, giving you an example of Southwest. They have an incredibly integrative process. They're not trying to be Delta. They're not trying to be United or, they just merged, didn't they, with Rosera or something? Anyway, they're, they're doing their own thing, right? They know who they are, they know who their target audience is, and they are doing their thing, and they do it really, really, really well. How many people fly Southwest? Just about all of us, why? Why do we fly? Uh, right, bags fly free. They're not the only airline that has that have free bags, and they're cheaper, right? Now, with that, you might not, you're not going to get a seat assignment, right? You have to go there, get in line. It's super awkward. But for the people who don't mind that, often students, 
you can pay a little bit less. So that's, that's, their, that's, that's their target audience, people who are willing to be a little bit uncomfortable for a little bit lower cost for travel. They know that. They've gone with it and really ran with it. Something else interesting about Southwest that I didn't learn until this conference, they have one type of plane. Why is that important? Well, I mean, one type of mechanic. Yes, exactly. Thank you for saying that. They have one type of mechanic. The pilots need to know how to pilot one type of plane. The flight attendants need to know how to service one type of plane. It's completely integrated and streamlined. This to me is the, yes, thank you. This to me is the essence of fit. And this is what is really important in your organization. Okay, this is what you have to define. If you don't have this defined, you need to figure it out. Because from there, you can't work effectively. Does that make sense? That's not possible. Number four, lean processes. <clears throat> this is about, this is one of the most hard, sorry, excuse me. This is one of the hardest things to talk about, to contemplate, and to do. You have to say, where is there waste in our current organization? Okay, if you have a membership, if you're working in an organization, if you have a membership of 100,000, and every year you put on a conference and only 30 people out of that 100,000 attend, there is no point to that conference, because you are not engaging the majority of the people in your organization. So you have to ask, what isn't adding value? What are we doing that doesn't contribute? You have to identify the waste and be willing to get rid of it, okay? And this leads us to the single most difficult thing but most essential part when you're discussing change, and that's purposeful abandonment. This is asking the question, what are we doing today that we are not going to do tomorrow in order to be successful, in order to stay relevant, in order to stay current in changing, ever-changing times. Now this has to align with the strategic plan, and that's why you need a strategic plan, because it's important. Because it says, this is who we are, this is where we're going, and this is what we're going to do. I have Steve Jobs up here. You guys know him. He's the founder of Apple. Well, it turns out that at one point, he was kicked off of the executive board at Apple, right? What happened after that? Woo! Apple went down the tubes. They were, according to some crazy websites, 90 days from failing, from declaring bankruptcy. So they brought him back in, put him back on the board. He the first thing he did is that he discontinued 70% of their product line. He took a $1 billion deficit and turned it into a $300 million profit in a single year. How did he do that? He made concentration decisions about his resources. He said, I am going to turn this company around and I'm going to market mobile, handheld entertainment technology to anybody who, can, who wants to buy it. So instead of working on servers and trying to cater to businesses and being the best in, you know, on the large scale, he went small. And he has been incredibly successful because of that. So he made concentration decisions. And that's it. I wish I had, oh, sorry. I wish I had a little bit more time to talk about all of this, but I wanted to give you an overview um, of everything that you want to think about when you're discussing change with your residency director when you go to talk to him or her. So you want to build and focus on your strengths, concentrate your resources, find your fit, create lean processes, and you have to embrace the necessity of purposeful abandonment. I think the last one is the single most important thing you can take from this talk today. Now, it makes no sense for me to go on and on and on if you can't remember this when you're staring your residency director in the face, right? Okay. So, I took the liberties. <laughs> you, can, you can remember this acronym if you're awake enough to remember it. <laughs> uh, Captain Jack Sparrow's rum fixation leaves people pondering always. <laughs> A little far-fetched, but I had to throw it in. And that's it. <laughs>